You've probably been hearing a lot in the media of data breaches, encryption and protecting your files, but we wanted to show you what this actually means in practice. Because in many cases you could be a victim to a hack without even knowing about it, as a small business this leaves you susceptible to losing important or sensitive data. We wanted to show you what the bad guys are doing and using a test environment we will be showing you how easy it is to take data from your files and the importance of adding file protection. So, how unprotected is your unprotected data? This is Ellie. He's putting sensitive data and all his business secrets in a word file to send to his colleague John. And while you'd think it's unlikely, you'd be surprised how often this happens. He's going to drop them over in an email so John can take a look ready for their next meeting. Little does he know that John's computer has been compromised and John doesn't know either. So, let's switch over to John's computer. We are now on John's computer and he's just received an exciting email from Ellie that is going to help their business. He downloads the attachment and decides to save it to his desktop because that's the safest place for it, right? Unfortunately not. Saving locally makes you feel safe psychologically. It's your personal machine after all and you associate it with yourself. However, this makes no difference to a hacker. And in fact, the desktop or in your My Documents folder is the first place that they look. John wants Ellie to know that his document is in safe hands, so he drops him an email, not realising that right now someone is watching his computer. It's important to note here that most of the modern viruses bypass the antivirus easily, and in many instances you won't even know that you've been hacked. So, how much can the hacker actually see? Let's switch over to the hacker's computer. We are now on one of the hacker's machines. Often, they will have a proxy machine to perform the actual hack, and then another machine to store the material. This helps them to keep their anonymity. It's connected with John's computer without his knowledge and the first thing they are doing is taking a screenshot of his computer. This could be done automatically so that your machine is constantly monitored so they don't miss a thing. Next, the hacker is downloading the entire desktop. This is something that can also be done automatically so that once your computer has been hacked, every time you save a file, it's copied in the background and the hacker gets it too. As you can see here, the name of the file John saved to his desktop is here on the hacker's computer. On the hacker's other machine, you can see the result of the hack. The screenshot of John and Ellie's email, as well as the sensitive information that they have been sharing unprotected. See how easy it is for the hacker to now look at the contents of the file, save it to the desktop, and then it could be sold on the dark web or used for blackmail. That's because when the file is not encrypted, it leaves your computer and the file itself is vulnerable and has no protection. This is why file protection is so important. We're now going to look at how Microsoft's Azure Information Protection can give your sensitive data and files that level of protection that you need so that if someone gets hold of your files, you won't be giving up any data. Now we are going to see how much sensitive data the hacker can see if we deploy file level protection. We're using Microsoft's Azure Information Protection as we recommend it to our clients. It's an excellent tool no matter the size of your business. As you can see here, we have the same Word file containing our sensitive information that Ellie is sending to John. This time, Ellie is using file protection and uses Azure's sensitivity bar to encrypt his file to an internal and approved supplier level. This means that only those within his company and trusted approved suppliers can access this document. As you can see here, it's now protected and Ellie emails the document the same as before. It's important to note here that John's computer has been compromised in the same way as our first video and he is unaware. Let's go to his computer now. He opens the email and downloads the attachment. As you can see here, John is on the internal and approved suppliers list and can therefore seamlessly open it. When clicking on the permissions, John can see the actions he is able to perform. Then, he renames and saves the file to his desktop as he normally would. As the encryption is at a file level, it doesn't matter what John does to the file, it will remain protected. Now, let's look at the hacker and see if they can get their hands on the data. The hacker is downloading all the files on John's desktop to see if there are any valuable files worth exploiting. This is the list of files that the hacker has received from John's desktop, including the secret file from Ellie. Watch what happens when he tries to open it with file encryption turned on. Because John isn't signed in, because it's not John, Azure Information Protection needs credentials to access the document. This is something that the hacker does not have and therefore it renders this hack useless.